Now, page four, the actual death by COVID numbers that tell a story of survival. The more we know about the Wuhan coronavirus, the more it's become crystal clear that this bug is really not that lethal. It's not. You people who have been in self-imposed hiding since, what, late February, early March, you can now come out. It's safe. In fact, when the actual numbers are studied, it's fairly obvious that these politicians who tanked our once robust economy acted on impulse and raw emotion and politically and ideologically. The National Vital Statistics, which is under the rather sprawling bureaucratic umbrella of the Center for Disease Control, keeps a daily COVID-19 death count on its website. It's called the Provisional Death Counts for the Coronavirus Disease. It's a rather morbid collection of data that lists the number of dead due to the COVID-19 versus the number of dead from the flu and from pneumonia. National Vital Statistics started keeping track of Wuhan coronavirus deaths in the first week of February 2020. There is some rather curious information contained within the multiple columns of statistics. Death by coronavirus is the first column. To the right of that is the total deaths in the United States from all causes. To the right of that is death by pneumonia, and there's also death from the flu. So here are the numbers. Total deaths for the three-month reporting period in the United States is 740,000. That's all causes of death from car crashes to murder to COVID-19. Total number of Americans killed purely by the Wuhan coronavirus is 38,500. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's almost half of what the mainstream media are reporting. There's an explanation. And it resides in one final column in this National Vital Statistics COVID-19 table. I'll get to that in a moment. Total number of dead from pneumonia, 66,000. 66,000 Americans killed from the first week of February to present from pneumonia. All right, so how many died from the flu? 5,800. That is a curious number. Since the 2019-2020 flu season was looking fairly severe through January of this year, some 40,000 Americans had died from influenza so far this flu season. That is until February rolled around. And then suddenly in February, death by flu plummets. Curious. All right, so what about the other column? It tallies the number of dead by a combination of pneumonia and the Wuhan coronavirus. And that number is 17,000. All right, so what can we conclude from the CDC data? Number one, the answer to my question that I asked, what, two months ago? How many of these people who died from the Wuhan coronas would have died from the seasonal flu? Apparently, now we know the answer. Americans were dying from the flu at a clip of about 7,000 a month until the government started tracking COVID-19. Then suddenly in February, the height of the flu season, the numbers drop to about 1,500 a month. Thousands of Americans who died from COVID-19 apparently would have also succumbed to the flu. That much is obvious from these numbers. We can also conclude that pneumonia is a much more lethal threat than COVID-19. And one more thing, the death by purely Wuhan coronavirus is fewer than 40,000, and even at that number, the inflated number, is because of this liberal declaration by death of COVID-19 complements of, yes, the CDC. All right, so what's the final conclusion? Well, if the 38,000 killed by corona is the numerator and our total population is the denominator, the odds of dying from COVID-19 are 0. 0.00001. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the exact same odds of dying from the flu, 0. 0.00001. So despite all of the fatal talks surrounding this virus, despite all of the political fear-mongering, in reality, the actual death by COVID-19 numbers tell a story of survival. However, that is not the message from these blue state governors like Gavin Newsom, 
who continue their needless lockdowns. However, he is beginning to feel the constitutional heat from residents who are now proclaiming loudly and repeatedly, enough is enough. I hope people uh, receive this warmly today. Stop tape, uh, but I stop tape, warmly. Here's a guy who comes out every day and tells 35, 40 million Americans in California, well, there's so many illegals in this, let's say 30 million American citizens, that their constitutional rights have been suspended and they're gonna continue to be in suspended until he says they're not. They wanted, he wants people to take that warmly, but look at his brow, it's furrowed. He's got that kind of clenched jaw going on, his teeth are kind of mashing and gnashing a little bit right now, he's feeling the heat. He's starting to feel it. And I have been telling people, watch California and watch what is going on. These protesters and these individual businesses, these hair salons and these restaurants and these gyms that are saying, no more, we are opening. The dictator is not going to rule our lives anymore. The dictator lied to us. Big Brother lied to us. We now know the numbers. And among them are the ones that I just stated. And he's not happy. He's not a happy dictator. He's feeling the heat. He's watching his grip on power slip. And this becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy in the end. Once one domino starts to fall, in the end, they're all going to fall. He cannot control this any longer. And so what he's doing is coming out and saying, guess what, I'm gonna relax some of the rules on you. I'm a benevolent dictator. I'm going to let you live your lives by the end of the week. I'm going to give you a little light at the end of the tunnel. And he's doing so because he has to. He's painted into a corner now. He sees the pushback is becoming overwhelming. Not so much the legal pushback, but just the grassroots pushback, mostly in Southern California, a little bit in Central California, not much in Northern California because they love this guy. But there are parts of way North California near the Oregon border that are saying, hey, we don't have any COVID-19 deaths. Why are we doing what this nutcase is telling us to do? So he's got to loosen it because he is the proverbial boy with his finger in the dike and the dike is beginning to cave. Roll tape. I recognize for some it's simply not good enough uh, and I recognize that uh, deeply. And that was exampled uh, over the course of Stop the days. And By the way, I, I, I've been listening to this guy speak now uh, just like Big Brother for the last couple of months. And he is butchering the English language. Exampled? <laughs> now, I, I guess technically that is a word, but, but he is butchering the English language every time he comes out. And no one in the mainstream media is calling him on it. And he stands there and he delivers his message in this kind of weird, staccato, broken English. I would love to hear a, a psychologist analyze this one. And out of the lips of this guy, what it, what it means as he stands there with glee and tells people their constitutional rights are suspended. Roll tape. Weeks where people are expressing themselves more firmly um, and expressing themselves in terms of their own anxieties and fears about their own personal uh, financial health, their mental health, the concerns about their community. Stop tape, stop tape. So, so despite all of the information that we have about the Wuhan coronavirus and about all the damage that he is doing to his economy and to the psyche of his people and to the bank accounts of his people, to the careers of his people of his state, he continues with the lockdown. He continues. Why, California? You have to ask yourself, why is he continuing? When you're seeing Texas and Florida and these other states open up, Gavin Newsom is still pushing back. Why, California? Begin to ask, be begin to question authority. The answer lies in the political arena. So Newsom knows what I know. He knows that the virus is no more lethal than the flu. So why is he doing this? Why the continued lockdown of his state, which sets the tone for other blue state governors? Other than ego, there's only one rational answer, and it's 100% politically and ideologically based. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One America News on YouTube. And call your cable provider and kindly demand that One America News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.